Welcome back to our course in number theory. We're going to continue working through George Andrews' book and talk about mathematical induction as it applies to a certain special class of numbers that you are probably familiar with, that is the Fibonacci numbers or the Fibonacci sequence. So I think this video will provide a nice example of how to formulate a conjecture and then we are going to use mathematical induction to prove our conjecture holds. So let's switch over to the document camera and get to work. Alright, so just so we are all on the same page, when I am talking about the Fibonacci numbers or the Fibonacci sequence, I'm talking about this string right here, it continues forever, but you start with two ones, so first term is one, second term is also one. Now to get the third term, you add the two previous terms. So one plus one gives us two, and then one plus two gives us three. Two plus three gives us five. Three plus five for eight. Five plus eight for thirteen. Eight plus thirteen for twenty-one. To get the next one, we would do 13 plus 21 and get 34. And then 21 plus 34 gives us 55, and so on forever. Okay, now the recursive mathematical definition looks like this. It says F1, so I'm using F for Fibonacci numbers, so F1 is the first Fibonacci number. So this statement right here says the first Fibonacci number is 1. F2, second Fibonacci number. Second Fibonacci number is also 1. And the rule that we were just following says that if you want to get any Fibonacci number, you take the previous one plus the one before that. So you want to get F10, you take F9 plus F8. You want to get F74, if n equals 74, you take f73 plus f72. So in other words, you want to get the 74th entry in the Fibonacci sequence, you take the 73rd entry plus the 72nd entry. Okay, now, there are lots of things we might notice about the Fibonacci sequence. One thing you can notice right away, odd, odd, even. Odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even, odd, odd. Oh, wait, so odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even. So the next one here would be 89, and then 55 plus 89 would give me an even. So it looks like every third Fibonacci number is even. So let's see if we can prove that. Okay, so that's our claim. So for all natural numbers n, F3n is even. Okay, so whenever we see this, in a claim that indicates that our proof will probably use mathematical induction. So let's try that. And of course we remember from the last video that we should always start with the base case. And the base case is when n equals 1. So the claim in the base case is about F3. And we can see right up here, F1 is 1, F2 is 1, F3 is 2. Which is even. Okay, so the claim holds when n equals 1. Now... We state the induction hypothesis, and that is that we will suppose for some 
specific but unknown natural number k, f3k is even. All right. Now for the induction step. We are going to consider F three K plus one. Okay, we are going to consider the next logical step. All right. So what we need to do is we need to use the properties of the Fibonacci sequence here. And all I really know about the Fibonacci sequence is that to get any term in the Fibonacci sequence I take the sum of the previous two terms. So I'm going to have to try and use that. So I have F 3k plus 1 Now what can I say about that? Well that would be equal to F3K plus 2 plus F3K plus 1. Okay, not a huge amount of help there. So what I'll probably have to do is I'll probably have to apply the definition of the Fibonacci numbers to these two terms. Now if I apply the definition to this, I would take the sum of the two previous terms in the sequence, which would be f 3k plus 1 plus f 3k. Alright, now notice I have another copy of that right here. Okay, so I can do a rewrite here. So this is certainly even because it's a multiple of 2. And this is even by the inductive hypothesis. And now, of course, we know whenever we take two even numbers and add them together, we get an even number. So that shows me that if f3k is even, then f3k plus 1 is also going to be an even number. And that actually proves our claim. Okay, so we looked at some properties in the Fibonacci sequence. We formulated a conjecture, which is kind of like something that we think is true. We only looked at some specific examples. This is a claim about an infinite class of examples, so we have to prove it by induction. And this is a neat little adaptation of the structure of an induction proof to the context of these Fibonacci numbers. So, the moral of the story is when you are trying to Prove statements about the Fibonacci numbers. Mathematical induction is usually the tool that you're going to need to use. And the only thing we really know about the Fibonacci numbers is the, their definition. We know that F1 is 1. We know that F2 is also 1. And we know that any term in the Fibonacci sequence is the sum of the previous two terms. So when we are trying to work in the inductive hypothesis on the induction step, we're going to have to go and use that definition to break up the Fibonacci number that we're working with into the sum of the two previous ones. And as you saw in this example, we might have to go even further back and break them up even more. Okay, so a neat little example of applying math induction to prove 
a statement about the Fibonacci numbers.